Good morning, dear friends, and welcome to Thursday, June 11th, but you already knew that. I want to personalize what I've been saying all week today, and today is the Feast of St. Barnabas. In reflecting upon the reading, St. Barnabas and Saul and a bunch of others were set apart to aid in the discipleship of the Lord to spread the good news. And it says that uh, they completed their prayer and their fasting. They completed their prayer and their fasting. And that's exactly what I was talking about yesterday when I kind of um, thought about the whole idea of retreat and prayer and downtime and being alone. Here we have a perfect example and it revolved around these early disciples and it was very specific. They completed their prayer and their fasting. The role of discipleship, which they were about to carry out, required that they be prepared, be prepared mentally, emotionally, that they were ready spiritually to go out into the world and to be disciples, to spread the good news, to begin to build these early Christian communities in the church. And that's exactly what you and I need to do all the time. We build families, we build relationships among coworkers, we build businesses, we build relationships among our classmates and the people who we go to school with. We are always, we are building our lives, building our lives every day and our, our relationships with other people. And in order to do that and do it well, again, prayer and fasting, we do the fasting business uh, every year around Lent. Uh, years ago when I was growing up, uh, we did not eat meat on Fridays. You don't see so much of the idea of using fasting today, although we found out that um, intermittent fasting is not a bad way to control uh, diet and weight these days. It's become somewhat fashionable. And most of us do eat too much, and we eat too much of the wrong things. So maybe maybe the ancient church was onto something about the fasting business. Be that as it may, Barnabas and his friends were being prepared for their labor in the vineyard of life. And we know them by name, and that's really what I want to drive home to all of you. If the name wasn't important, if the individual wasn't important, enough to write down and pass along, and we're talking about real living people 2,000 years after the event. Who's going to be talking about you and I 2,000 years from now? Think about that. But the talking about these people, we know them by name. Well, guess what? God knows you by name. Whether you're Ralph, whether you're Ann, whether you're Brian, whether you're Andrew, whether you're Susan, whether you're whoever you are, you are known by name by God. You as a named individual matter in the world. You matter in the world and you make a difference in the world. I am not coming to you and looking at all of you saying, you're my television audience. You are individuals called into the vineyard of life, into discipleship by Almighty God. You are called by name. Called by name. You may not be called to build the early church because it's done already, but you're called to continue to thrive in the church and to build the church of today. And you do do that. You build the church of today by uh, acting uh, in the world and upon the world the people we know and the people we love. Earlier in the week, I talked about the role of prophet. You play the role of prophet. You don't play it. You are it. And you do it by being the best mother, the best father, the best brother, the best sister, the best coworker that you can. You, you, that's what you do. And the, um, the way in which you do it, the operating elements of doing it, are the values we learn from Christ himself. That's how you get the job done. You are a lover. You're a forgiver. You're a peacemaker. You are um, a, a person of justice um, and uh, right thinking. Uh, just look at the Gospels. That's how, that's how you get the work done. 
but it does bring us back to what I said yesterday, Ralph and Susan and Janet and George and whoever you are, you need to take that time like Barnabas did, prayer, reflection, downtime, alone time, fasting, perhaps, maybe reading some poetry, maybe just looking at a sunset. Last evening I was out on my deck and it was a beautiful full moon and I went and got my binoculars and it's amazing um, what a beautiful sight it is when you just get a little tiny bit closer. So like Barnabas, my friends, you are sent out into the vineyard of life. It is a responsibility. It is a discipleship. It is a charism and a blessing unto the world. Take it seriously. Prepare yourself with prayer, reflection, and whatever else you need to do because God depends on you. Barnabas and his cohorts built the early church. All of you, by name, are doing exactly the same thing today in the way you live your life in justice and in love of others. Take care and God bless. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Without cost, you have received. Without cost, you are to give. Do not take gold or silver or copper for your belts, no sack for the journey, or a second tunic or sandals or walking stick. The laborer deserves his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, look for a worthy person in it and stay there until you leave. As you enter a house, wish it peace. If the house is worthy, let your peace rest upon it. If not, let your peace return to you. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> I've always liked this Gospel. And the take that I usually talk about with it has to do with stuff. He tells the disciples, when you go out in the world, don't take a lot of stuff. Just take what's necessary because you have what's most important. You have my word in your heart. Don't let anything get in the way. Haven't you ever thought when you've heard this why it's so detailed about what to take and what not to take? I think there's a lesson in that. They might have had what they traveled with and what they thought they needed, but what Christ is saying you have what you need. You have my word in your heart. When you find a place that's worthy of you, stay there and wish peace upon that house. What Jesus is saying to them is, enter into the proclamation as disciples without any encumbrances. Don't let stuff and things get in your way. Go out, be with people, and proclaim the word. And don't think you need an awful lot of traveling gear to do that. You simply don't. How often, and many of you may understand this, um, when I travel anywhere, all I need is one bag. It doesn't matter where I'm going. I, I, for how long, I can manage with minimal luggage. And how many people, when they travel, need 19,000 bags? Even when, now when you have to pay for that stuff, I marvel at some people uh, and I know where they're going because they're on the same plane I am and they got on when I got on and they got off when I got off and it's one person and they go to the luggage checkout and, and they have enough bags to make uh, to build a household. I don't get it, but that's the way life is. We tend to think we need a lot of stuff and we don't. And again, I always, I always really get into this whole thing in, in my own preaching. You know, you drive through a town like where we live and there are three car garages. They're filled with everything except cars. Isn't that the truth? We have, we have storage units, five stories high. People pay lots of money to put their stuff in there. And after a while, if you ask them what they put in there, they wouldn't even remember. And there are television shows devoted to people who go to auctions to buy those storage units and see if there's anything of value in there because the people who rented it don't even want it anymore. They walked away. What? has become of us that we need so much in life. What happened? This is a great gospel if you think you might be a hoarder, isn't it really? Isn't this a great gospel to reflect upon if you look around your house and you say to yourself, what am I gonna do with all this? 
And it's sad because it does get in the way. It gets in the way of life. Sometimes people seem to think that if they buy and they have all this, well, it's a sign that life is good. No, it's not. It's a sign that your life is out of control. It's a sign that your life is cluttered. <clears throat> and that is not a healthy way to live life. I used to think that the whole notion of hoarding was confined to, you know, a certain outrageous reality TV show until I started visiting homes when I was much younger and seeing the level of clutter that people seem to need in their lives. And we really don't need it. So this may have been a gospel of 2,000 years ago, and they may not have had, and they certainly didn't have nearly the level of of, of, of clutter that we do, but it has more value now than it ever did before because it gets in the way of life. If you think about all the time we spend on our possessions and how little sometimes we spend on one another, there's the ultimate test, my friends. What are we spending on accumulation and on love of that accumulation and how much time are we spending upon the Lord's work in the world? Only you can be the judge of that. In the Beatitudes earlier on in the week, you are blessed of God time after time after time. There was no tagline on it at the end that said, you are blessed of God. By the way, you should collect this and get as much of it as you can. You are blessed of God. Don't let anything get in the way. Jesus says that to his disciples today. You have the greatest responsibility in the world, preaching the kingdom of God. And the only way you're going to do it is if the kingdom of God is the greatest life force that you have. And that advice works even now. Let our lives be beacons of peace, which is part of the gospel, but also let them be unencumbered by the world around us. Because we already have what we need. God has given it to us, most especially the gift of love. Live a life of love, my friends, and never let things and stuff get in the way. Look at the world around you. And if you feel life is overwhelming you with physical things, get rid of them. Live a simpler life. It worked. The gospel of the Lord got carried to us this very day by these good folks who made it the centerpiece of their lives. It was then and it should be today. Take care and God bless you. And now my friends, as we have shared the word of God together, I invite you to spend time with me in front of the Blessed Sacrament as we share our spiritual prayer of communion. Please join me in prayer, my friends. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
May Almighty God bless all of us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the peace of Christ always be in your hearts. Now, my friends, I invite you to share a sign of peace with those you are with at the moment and share it with them throughout the day. This Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, and it is a time of great um, celebration, the birthday of our church. Thank you. Hi, this is Tom Petania. What have I been doing during quarantine? Well, I have more time at home now, so I become innovative in cooking, and uh, I'm finding that actually good and healthy because I'm trying different things and different ingredients and uh, becoming quite creative. So that's been fun. I've also been spending a lot of times outdoors, more than I normally would being stuck in the office, so I've had an opportunity to do things that I wouldn't normally do, such as my own landscaping, uh, and some of the things I want to do around the house. So that's been positive also. And certainly checking in with friends and family around the world, uh, seeing how they're doing, making sure that them and their loved ones are okay, and um, just offering words of positivity and if there's anything I can do to help them. What I missed most about OLC is I'm a creature of habit. So ever since the beginning, I've been going to church and sitting in the same spot far right to the church. And uh, when I look ahead, I will see Joe. When I look to my left in the center aisle, I'll see the Trenicost family and so forth and so on. And obviously many of you do the same because I see you in the same spots. I particularly miss Father Mike in person telling his stories about his Italian upbringing and the way things were. Uh, it makes it very interesting during mass. And of course, leaving and saying goodbye to Father Mike. Uh, that might be a different experience now. I'm not so sure that uh, we'll be shaking hands, but none of the difference uh, will certainly uh, acknowledge one another and say goodbye. I want to wish you and all well. I hope you're doing well during this pandemic and finding opportunities. And I uh, want you all to have a blessed day. Thank you.